Y'all ready for Ant-Man 3D? Y'all ready for Scott Lang's hot wang sticking out of the screen at ya? Let's take it back to the origins first. The opening scene begins in 1989 with the introduction of Hank Pym, a popular physicist and entomologist. He works for the best research facility in the world, SHIELD. Currently, he has discovered magical particles that are capable of either shrinking or enlarging someone. Hank has even created a suit using these particles, which he believes will help the nation fight against terrorists and, of course, enable perverts. However, the superiors at SHIELD want the technology for their own benefit. They want to create superhuman humans, but Hank is totally against this. So, to keep the technology from falling into the wrong hands, Hank resigns from S.H.I.E.L.D. That's not how that works. If Hank developed it while working for S.H.I.E.L.D., it would have belonged to them. This is bu Marvel's bull. Several years later, he establishes his own organization, PIM Technologies, which he runs with his daughter, Hope, and a guy named Darren. Hank continues his research, but he hides the suit and its technology, even from his employees. Unfortunately, one day, Darren gets to know about it, so he starts plotting to overthrow Hank out of his own company. After a lot of planning, he finally prevails. Hank is forced to resign, and Darren is made the new CEO of PIM Technologies. In the present day, Darren calls the old man to his office and unveils a new suit he has recently designed. He calls it Yellow Jacket. Apparently, this suit has all the attributes, like the one Hank had designed back in 89. Darren is now looking to test it on some live subjects, and if it works, he will start mass producing it. This frightens the old man as he believes that the suit could cause destruction if the bad guys get a hold of it. However, Darren could care less. He just wants to make money, money, money! Elsewhere, a convict named Scott Lang is being released from prison after three years in captivity. He ended up in jail after infamously burglarizing his own employer. He was also pulled over multiple times for looking too damn sexy. Scott is picked up by his old accomplice, Lewis, and on the way, the latter reveals that he has a new heist for him. However, Scott refuses to be a part of it, saying that he does not want to disappoint his daughter anymore. The following day, Scott applies to several jobs, but everywhere he is rejected due to his criminal history. This sends him spiraling into a state of depression. The only ray of light in Scott's life is his daughter Cassie, so he goes to visit her. Unfortunately, his ex-wife Maggie and her new cop husband, Paxton, immediately ask him to leave. Maggie warns Scott that if he wants to see their daughter, he will have to get a decent job and make the child support payments. Dejected, Scott storms out of the house and later calculates how much money is required for child support. When he learns that <laughs> it is a lot, he reluctantly decides to join hands with Lewis and take part in the heist. In the next scene, Lewis briefs Scott about his mission, in which he will have to rob an old scientist's house. Apparently, there are a lot of valuables and high-end gadgets there, which would sell for millions in the black market. That scientist is none other than Hank Pym. Scott, who is a professional at such robberies, immediately accepts. That night, he climbs the fence, removes the window sensors, and then proceeds to the basement by opening a window. After unlocking the basement door, he finds a second door, which is fingerprint coded. Fortunately, Scott is prepared for such situations. He cleverly lifts the fingerprints using some of his tricks and finally manages to open the door. Because of the intense security, Scott assumes that something very valuable is kept inside. But, to his dismay, all he finds is a strange red suit. He is unaware that he has broken into Hank Pym's house, who has been watching him all along. Back at Pym Technology, Darren is attempting to shrink a sheep to the microscopic size. Unfortunately, in the process, he ends up killing the poor animal. <laughs> The experiment is deemed a failure, but Darren is determined to carry on with the tests. Elsewhere, Scott returns home with the suit and tries it on inside the bathroom. He then presses a red button on his hand, and as soon as he does so, he suddenly shrinks to the size of an insect. To make matters worse, Lewis enters the bathroom and turns on the fap. What? Oh, the tap. Creating a tsunami for the little guy. Scott desperately tries to press the button on his other hand, hoping that it will revert him back to his original form, but to no avail. So, he simply makes a run for it and ends up falling through a crack. Scott lands on the lower floor where hundreds of people are enjoying a party. He somehow avoids getting trampled, but once again falls through a crack and reaches another room. There, he is sucked inside a vacuum cleaner, chased by a rat, and launched by a mouse trap. At last, he smashes through the window and lands on top of a car. The impact finally reverts him back to his original size, confused and scared by the incident. Later that night, Scott decides to go back inside the compound to return the suit 
pursuit, but just as he jumps inside, he is surrounded by cops. Scott is arrested and taken to jail, where Paxton tells him that he has once again disappointed his daughter. Shortly after, another cop arrives and informs Scott that his lawyer has arrived. This surprises the latter as he never contacted any lawyer. When he goes to check who it is, he finds the scientist, Hank, waiting for him. The old man reveals that he has been monitoring Scott ever since he got out of jail. He purposely spread the rumor that his house contained valuables so that Lewis would be lured to it. In fact, he wanted Scott to steal the suit and try it on. Saying all this, Hank gives Scott two options. He can either waste his years in prison or he can embrace the suit and work for him. As Scott returns to his cell, confused, an army of ants suddenly arrives with the suit. He doesn't think twice and puts it on and the next second he shrinks in size like earlier. Scott then escapes the prison and outside a flying ant is waiting for him. He immediately mounts it and tries to ride it through the streets. But because of the high speed, he feels nauseous and passes out. Get it together, Scott. You never seen a flying ant before, you pussy. The next morning, Scott wakes up at Hank's house with Hope and a bunch of ants looking over him. Later, the old man summons him to the dining room and reveals that he was chosen because of his unique skill of sneaking into places undetected. Hank then tells Scott everything about the history of the suit and even explains how he plans to stop Darren with it. But for that, he wants Scott to go to Pym Technology and steal the yellow jacket. While he's there, Scott will have to erase all the records of the research so that Darren can never replicate the tech again. Elsewhere, at Pym Technologies, Darren finally manages to shrink a sheep to the size of an insect. Hope witnesses this and becomes worried, so she immediately informs her dad about it. Meanwhile, Scott believes that the mission is too dangerous, so he advises the old man to seek help from the Avengers. However, the latter refuses, saying that he doesn't want the technology to fall into the hands of Tony Stark. He mentions that he is doing this for the sake of mankind, and this finally convinces Scott. So, he starts training himself for the mission by practicing martial arts and learning the ability to control ants. He also works on his timing by shrinking and growing back multiple times. In one instance, he tries to become even smaller by altering his suit, but Hank stops him. The old man claims that if he shrinks any more, he will reach subatomic size and enter the quantum realm, where reality and the notions of time and space are irrelevant. You gotta wait for phase four for that, Scott. We gotta wait till the writers run out of good ideas. Once he reaches this realm, there is no coming out of it. Hank knows all of this because in the year 1987, his wife Janet also made the same mistake. During a mission, she shrunk her size more than she should have, and to this day, she has been trapped inside the quantum realm. For the first mission, Scott is asked to retrieve a piece of equipment that he will require in the mission. The only problem is that this equipment is guarded inside the Avengers headquarters. Despite this, Scott heads to the location where he encounters the Falcon, Sam Wilson. At first, he politely asks for the equipment, but when the Falcon refuses, they get into a fight. It goes on for several minutes, but in the end, Scott shrinks in size, enters the Falcon's suit, and destroys it from the inside. After this, he retrieves the equipment and makes a run for it. Later, as Hank and Scott are discussing their next move, Darren arrives there. He informs the old man that he has successfully tested his suit and is going to sell it to a buyer. The transaction is going to be held in a high security building where even the vents will be sealed with microscopic mesh. Before leaving, the cocky Darren invites Hank to witness the sale. I sealed it off so you can't come in, but here's an open invite. Hearing all this, Scott realizes that the mission is going to be tougher than expected, so he calls Lewis for help. Well, <laughs> what the hell is Lewis gonna do? In the next scene, the group carries out the necessary arrangements and gets ready to steal the yellow jacket. Lewis disguises as a security security officer and reduces the water pressure inside the water pipes. Using this opportunity, Scott manages to sneak inside the building, along with his aunt friends. On the other hand, the buyer arrives, and he is revealed to be an executive from Hydra, a notorious underworld corporation. If the yellow jacket falls into their hands, humanity will be at a serious risk. Meanwhile, Scott enters the server room to plant a bomb in the system. At first, he directs his aunt friends to damage the building's security system and burn all backup data. Once that is done, Scott Scott heads to the transaction room and prepares to steal the yellow jacket. However, when he lunges at it, Darren arrives in the nick of time and traps him inside a glass cage. It turns out he was well aware of their plan and had been tracking Scott for some time. Darren then brings out a gun and prepares to finish Hank off. But right then, Scott breaks free and unleashes a brutal punishment on the Hydra agents. While this is happening, Darren shoots Hank in the chest and then aims for Scott, but the resilient ants show up and prevent him from pulling the trigger. 
realizing that he is going to be defeated, Darren somehow retreats with the bag, carrying the yellow jacket. After a while, Scott also incapacitates all the Hydra agents and goes after him. Meanwhile, the bomb that was planted in the server room is about to explode, so Hank gives his tank keychain to Hope and asks her to enlarge its size. As soon as she does so, the father-daughter duo escapes the building right before it caves in. Elsewhere, Darren escapes the place in a helicopter, but soon, he notices an army of ants approaching him. It turns out that Scott was also able to board the helicopter. Panicked, Darren brings out his gun and begins shooting at him, but due to Scott's tiny size, none of the bullets connect. Hence, with no options left, Darren puts on the yellow jacket and shrinks to the size of Scott. With this, the two tiny humans start battling it out for supremacy. Soon, they fall out of the helicopter and land in a pool, but the fighting doesn't stop there. Scott somehow manages to throw Darren into a light bulb and electrocute him, but just when he is about to finish the bad guy off, Paxton arrives and arrests him. Paxton's f***ing his wife and his plans. After they are gone, Darren wakes up and decides to exact vengeance on Scott by going after his family. Meanwhile, as Paxton is leading Scott to the police station, he is informed that someone has broken into his house. Wasting no time, the two head there and discover Darren holding little Cassie hostage. This enrages Scott, so he once again shrinks in size and starts fighting the bad guy. But no matter how hard he tries, Darren keeps repelling his attacks. This is when Scott realizes that in order to defeat the Yellow Jacket, he will have to get inside of it by shrinking himself even further. He knows that there is no coming back, but... For the sake of his daughter's safety, he proceeds with the plan. It works, and as soon as Scott enters the suit, he destroys it from inside, causing Darren to vanish into thin air. But with this, Scott also gets trapped in the quantum realm. There is nothing but an endless vacuum around him. He tries using the button on his hand, but it doesn't work. Right then, he hears his daughter crying, and this gives him the motivation to get out of the place. He recalls the equipment that he had stolen from the Avengers base, and uses it to rewire his suit. Surprisingly, this works. I don't know how. But it works, and he is able to return to the normal world. Scott immediately embraces his daughter, and at the same time, the cops also arrive. However, seeing his bravery, Paxton covers for him, giving him ample time to shrink in size and escape. In the final scene, Hank and Scott are having a conversation about the events that transpired last night. The old man is still in shock as to how Scott was able to escape the quantum realm. However, he is now hopeful that his wife can also be brought back. The movie ends as Lewis catches up with Scott and reveals that the Avengers are looking to recruit him.